Hi, this is Eric Weiss, and I am the Learning Resource Metadata Initiative Project Lead for Agilix Labs in the development of the Tagger and Search applications. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of using the LRMI Tagger to create metadata tags for your educational resources. Now, the first thing that you're going to need to do to get started is to go to the URL. When you go to the URL, what you'll find is that you need to enter in some personal information so that Tagger can identify you. The first time that you go in, we'll ask for your first name, last name, organization name, and some, uh, an email address to contact you. Uh, role information, year and grade taught for educational professionals, a number of years of experience if you're a teacher or a curriculum uh, individual would be very helpful for us to have as well so we know more information about the folks that are tagging content. You can see when I push that button that Tagger now knows who I am. Now Tagger is designed to support both individual resource tagging as well as batch resource tagging. This first example is a case where you only want to tag a single resource. So I'm going to go ahead and push the new button and you can see now that Tagger will provide information in here for a new resource. When I click in new item, that gives Tagger the information to know that I actually want to work on that resource as opposed to multiple resources, which will become apparent later when I demonstrate tagging bulk upload processes. Now, you can see that there are three different tabs that are revealed in the central pane. We have the general tab, which are already part of the schema.org thing and are used to describe a particular art artifact. We have education fields, which are the education-specific properties from the LRMI 1.0 specification. The alignment fields are part of the alignment object that allow you to tag resources on educational framework. Now, we currently only support the Common Core state standards, but Tagger is designed to be extensible to accommodate other frameworks for tagging purposes. I'm now going to add the title and URL for a specific resource. Now we're using demo data, or test data, rather from the proof of concept that we've been running here for the last few months. So I'm going to pull some of that information into Tagger. First I'm going to get a title, and I'm just copying and pasting this information. You can see once I paste in and tab out of that field that the title is now reflected here in Tagger. I'm now going to go ahead and grab a URL and show one of the other features of Tagger, which is the use of an iframe in this right-hand section to go out and grab the actual web page content for the resource that we're tagging. This is, of course, very important for individuals that are tagging resources they might not be that completely familiar with. In this case, we're using demo data from Rosen Classroom, who's been participating in the proof of concept. Now, if I have the information available, I can include information regarding the created date, the topic or subject, the publisher name, and the use rights URL. We'll show how the bulk upload via CSV is reflected in these fields later on in the demo. Now I'll show you how to enter in some of the education-specific values. First of all, I'm going to start with end user, and you can see by clicking on the end user that it opens up an accordion frame here, where it gives me some options to select. For this particular case, I'm going to select student, and if I want to select uh, multiple values here, I can either use the command key on my Mac, or the control key on a Windows PC to include multiple items. Now, if none of the available options here really fit the tags that I want to create, I do have the option to go in here and use the other field and enter in whatever I'd like. There'll be cops, uh, if I have more than one element for this particular value that I want to enter in, then I can just use separated values with uh, comma separated values to do that. Now, one of the things also that you can do in Tagger is see how your work is building. So I'm going to go ahead and switch on to the Output tab. And you can see that it's capturing the information that I've included uh, through this tagging effort. So when I go on to Age Range, I'm going to select 5 through 8, and you can see the Output tab build. And if I select Multiple, then it includes it there with a comma-separated value. Now, one of the things that we notice is that some of the fields have a lot of options to select from. So I'm going to go to the Educational Use field, which has a significant number of values. 
and I'm just using my mouse cursor uh, or my mouse wheel to scroll up and down here. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and just compare a few of these or grab a few of these to include them in the output file. And then I'll close this particular value to make sure that I have room to work for the rest of my tagging efforts. Now one of the other things that we can do is include learning resource type, media type, and time required. Now time required is kind of a different input mechanism. We are forced to follow a very specific output structure to accommodate the ISO 8601 time duration format. So what I'm going to do is show you how that works. We've got sliders here to include the duration for this particular resource. In this case, we're going to say that it's one hour. You can see now in the output tab for time required, we've got the ISO 8601 format. It's not a very intuitive input process uh, to try to capture this you know, type of a format, so we've used sliders to make it as easy as possible for the users, while still making sure that the output is as accurate as we can make it. Now, the alignment tab allows you to relate this educational resource to one or more Common Core state standards. Now, as a first step, you need to select that educational alignment. And in this case, we're going to select an alignment type of teaches. Now, part of what Tagger does is it allows, uh, it will automatically populate the, dot, the item URL for, from corestandards.org with the dot notation, which are two of the three identifiers for a common core state standard from core standards. It also goes out to the achievement standards network and grabs the actual item description. So I'm going to show an example of what that looks like. I'm going to start off with grabbing the dot notation because I happen to have that available. And you can see that Tagger gives me some options that are similar to what I'm looking for. So uh, this one happens to be this particular standard. And you can see now that I've got the item URL and I've got the description that have been populated in here. When I push add, it goes ahead and adds that into the output file. Now I can also use the same, the same exact information to replicate the alignment. For example, this particular educational resource may both teach and assess the same standard. And I want that information to be reflected on the metadata. So what I'll do is I'll go down and I'll push this particular chevron here. And that is my notification that I've now got a duplication here. And then I will change that to assesses. And I'll add that into the output format or the output file. Now, if I need to, I can also delete this alignment by using the delete button. I click on the previous session alignment. And let's say I'm going to delete that first one and push delete. And it pulled it right off. So you can see that it still assesses as the alignment type. You can also see that the previous session alignment is still available for me to use in my ongoing tagging activity. So now that I've completed the tagging work for this particular example, I want to save the result. Now pushing the Save button actually gives me a couple of different options in terms of saving this file. I can save it locally to my hard drive on this computer as either a comma-separated separate, comma values file or a JSON file, or I can save it up to a server for inclusion in search results in the JSON format. What I'm going to do locally is choose to save it as a local CSV file. You can see that it saves locally. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that to open it up. And as Excel is thinking about it, you can see that the content that I've added in here is now in the uh, CSV upload format that I'll show in uh, the next part of the demo. There's the information I entered for intended end user role. There's an educational use information. And here's the alignment type with the dot notation, the core standards target URL, and the target description. And that's now all available in the JSON and the CSV output. Now, we think that the CSV output function is actually going to be quite valuable for a number of different types of users on the system. If you've got an existing set of web pages that you want to use, uh, that you want to embed metadata into that describes your educational resources according to the LRMI spec, being able to take that information in a CSV format and import it into your existing web publishing application or content management system, we think is an important use case that Tagger does a really good job of supporting. Now I want to demonstrate how Tagger can work with bulk data. Now this example also uses content from one of the participants in our proof of concept, which 
Now, we've been working with folks from Creative Commons and the Association of Educational Publishers on this proof of concept for a number of months now. We'd really like to appreciate uh, or extend our appreciation to the publishers that have been participating with us in this effort. So here is the demo data that we're going to go ahead and be uploading in here. We've got 15 different resources that we're using that follow that same format that I just showed before in terms of the CSV upload functionality. But there's no dot notation or target URL or target description available in this particular sample data. So what I'm going to do is now go back to Tagger. I'm going to refresh Tagger to start a new tagging session. And then I'm going to push the load button. When I push the load button, it gives me a couple of different options. First is I can load a CSV template. And you can see here that I have that template available so that I can use it to get my data in the proper format for inclusion into Tagger. Or if I want, I can do quick load. And a quick load really is just if I have a set of four or five, what have you, URLs that I want to tag against, then I want to use a title, comma, URL format to put that in this section, and that will bring it into Tagger. So I'm going to go ahead and show the bulk load via CSV. And I want to make sure I'm using the right CSV sample here. And I'm going to push the load key after I navigate and select that information. Now you can see in Tagger that I have all that same information that was in that spreadsheet that I had just shown earlier. When I let Tagger know that I want to work on this particular resource, it populates all of the information that I've got in the comma separated values file into Tagger. So in this case, I'm going to just make a change to include the English in there. And I also say, oh, I want to make sure I've got the right URL, so I'm going to push this icon here to go out and fetch that information, and there it is. So I'm feeling pretty good about the metadata that I've loaded up in here. Now in this example, one of the things that I want to do is I want to use Tagger to create metadata that applies to multiple resources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Tagger know that I'm now tagging against multiple resources, and I'm going to select the first five resources on this list. And you can see that no information is displayed in these fields because, of course, it can only display one educational resource at a time. But if I look at my output file, I can see that I've got output for all of those resources that I just selected. Next thing I'm going to go do is I'm going to create an educational alignment that applies to all of these particular resources. So I'm going to go through the same process of including identifying the educational alignment and the alignment type. I'm going to go ahead and choose Assesses. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, standard that I want to use and paste that dot notation in there, select it, and then I'm going to add that standard. Because I had each of those resources checked here in the tags section, that information was added to all of those resources in the output file. So each of these resources now has been tagged with the proper dot notation, the proper item URL, and the proper description that all come straight out of Tagger. Now what I can do is I can save this information both up to the server or locally in either a CSV or a JSON file. Future iterations of Tagger will absolutely be into, integrated with the Learning Registry and have an automatic save to Learning Registry function. We're just not in that uh, phase of the development effort yet. So I'm going to show, uh, finally, the save to JSON th functionality. So you can see locally I've saved it to my local machine. I'm going to click on that file to open it so we can see the JSON format. And here we go. I've been able to demonstrate the ability to import data into Tagger from a comma-separated values file, to modify that content both on an individual and on a bulk basis, and then to apply tags to multiple ver uh, educational resources that were uploaded in that file, and then to create an output file that reflects all of the work I did to apply that uh, information in terms of the single uh, common core state standard that applies to all of those resources so that they now have the proper alignment uh, and that then is reflected in metadata that can be integrated or, or loaded up into the learning registry and made available to the uh, through the learning registry to ver a variety of different applications as well as through both a JSON file and a comma separated values file that I can use in my own web publishing system and, and or my content management system. So thank you very much for watching this brief Tagger demo, and we appreciate the opportunity to work on this important project.